Hello everybody, this is Mr. Rob and welcome back to episode number 69 of the Cleveland Spiders franchise here on MLB The Show 21. Draft week continues here on the channel as today we have the 2022 Major League Baseball Draft as we'll see where the newest prospects go in the MLB's system. Now if you want to pause it here and get a, to know some more of the prospects, I'll link both draft previews that we've done in this series for these upcoming prospects in the description below but we're gonna get started with the first year player draft the spiders have the 25th pick in the draft so we're gonna go ahead and simulate to our pick and we'll take a look and pause at see where some of the top players got drafted as you can see some of them already going off of the books and the first pick in this draft was Johnny Rosenberg a right fielder from Hewitt Trustville High School in Trustville Alabama Pittsburgh goes with the 18 year old. He looks pretty solid across the board. Second pick, the Orioles took Marshall Warren, the catcher out of Arizona. We took a look at him in that blue chip prospect episode. Like I said, we'll be down in the description below. He'll be mostly a defensive catcher for Baltimore. The Tiger division rivals, they took a shortstop, Jimmy Pesky from Northwestern in the third pick of the draft. Somebody we actually did not highlight who looks pretty consistent as well across the board. The sixth pick, the, or the Royals took my favorite player in this draft class, Omar Fernandez, the first baseman from USC. He has a very solid bat. He's probably going to be, I would say he might be ready before 2026. Tenth pick, the Marlins took Ray Carney, left fielder out of Missouri via Horsham, Pennsylvania. A right fielder, or left fielder, excuse me, who swings right-handed. He's got some speed and pretty consistent across the board. The 12th pick, the Angels took who I thought would go to number one, and that's Larry Pringle, the lefty pitcher out of UCLA. Maybe it's only because he pitched three innings of college ball in this past year thanks to some shoulder problems. The Angels didn't seem to mind. They made him the 12th pick in the draft. And then two picks later, the Blue Jays took his friend and teammate, Mackenzie Lopez, college roommate, and he is from Montana by way of UCLA, a dominant closing pitcher. 22nd pick, the White Sox took Kirby Harris, a second baseman from Ohio, specifically Ohio State. Somebody we didn't highlight, but he looks very good, 19-year-old as well. And that takes us to our pick with the 25th pick, and there are some players on the board that we've highlighted who I want to take a look at. First one, Bradley Lugo. He has the highest potential, they say, the starting pitcher out of Pittsburgh, who we highlighted. He looks pretty solid, but I think I do like Peter Del Carmen more. His potential is a little lower, which has me a little concerned. And I made the tough decision. I actually do take Bradley Lugo here with the 25th pick, the starting pitcher out of Pittsburgh. He is our first round selection. Now I actually did get lucky. I didn't know we had a competitive balance round A pick, so that was kind of surprising. We'll touch on more on that in a second, but right after we picked Lugo, the Braves took Reggie Benson, the first baseman out of Stanford. He has a phenomenal contact bat, but I just didn't think he'd go in the first round. I was looking at him more in rounds two or three. Next pick after that, our Twins rival pick Eddie Gonzalez out of the Dominican Republic. That was a very intriguing pick, considering his potential is only 55. But back to our competitive balance round A pick, I thought we'd have to decide between Lugo and Del Carmen. Well, since we have this pick, why not get both? So we just select Peter Del Carmen with a 36th pick in the draft thanks to our competitive balance round A pick. In round two, the Tigers took Juan Castaneda, the relief pitcher from Miami, who I was also targeting in the later rounds. Don't think he's going to blow me away, so I thought round two was a very interesting time to pick him. We use our round two pick on another player. We highlighted another pitcher, by the way, in David Fortenberry. He is the last one that we highlighted in our draft preview episodes, the starting pitcher out of Cal. He needs some work in some areas, but he's got great velocity. He's got good control over his pitches. So I thought those were two good characteristics. So we'd make David Fortenberry the 58th pick in the draft. The rest of the way, we're going to take a look at the picks that we made it's in round three with pick 99. We only have five players left that we've scouted. So I go with the highest potential guy, another starting pitcher, David France, the 19-year-old from Stony Brook, who has very good potentials across all of his levels. You can see he does need to work on those hits per nine. But we picked David France in the third round. And in the fourth round, we pick 129. We only have one player left that we have accurate information on, and that's third baseman Bob Garcia from Maryland. Nothing that really blows you away, but I do like having accuracy on my picks. So we do make Bob Garcia the 129th pick in the draft. And then with two more picks, we are taking shots in the dark. 
So I went with a couple of international players. First in pick 159, it's Gary Matsui, a relief pitcher from Japan. He last played for the Hanshin Tigers of the Nippo Baseball League. We select him 159. And then a 189 in the last round that is highlighted round six. We go Tom Nunez, a starting pitcher from the Netherlands, who last played for the Netherlands national team. He has good velocity, break, and control, so that trifecta makes him our pick in the sixth round. But that brings us to the end of the draft. And let's get a more in-depth look with all of our picks, starting off with our first rounder, Bradley Lugo. And you can see he has 87 potential. We actually drafted three guys to a potential 80 or higher. So I thought a pretty solid overall draft. Lugo is a 59 overall with B potential, so he is going to need some work. But you can see he's got good velocity, good break, and he just needs to work on that control as well as his hits in cape or not. Peter Del Carmen, my favorite player we draft. He's arguably better off the gate. 67 overall, B potential at 21 years old. He could very well be a Major League Baseball player by the time he's 23, 24 with that 94 velocity. Round two, we take David Fortenberry, 59 overall, D potential. He's definitely going to need some work if he's to reach the major league level. He's got the velocity and the break. He just doesn't really have anything else. And that's going to need a lot of time. And he's already 23 years old. David France also has B potential. He's a 67 overall. So our best pitcher he might have took was our third round pick out of Stony Brook. Maybe that's why he didn't get such recognition. He played for a smaller college, but a nice solid pick here in the third round. Fourth round, we took Bob Garcia, 48 overall, D potential, tons of work needed. Like I said, I just like to make accurate picks, but I don't think Garcia will really ever make an impact. And then the fifth round, we took Gary Matsui, 58 overall, C potential. He's actually just going to stay over in Japan and play, so we did not get a deal done with Gary Matsui. And the same thing with our last pick, Tom Nunez. He has decided to stay in the Netherlands. 65 overall, which is nice and high, but a C potential. He thought his best path would be to stick overseas. That brings us to the end. Let's take a look at some of our other teams. I didn't click on Kirby Harris for some reason, but the Tigers took Jimmy Pesky three overall. And he has 49 overall, a potential. Just needs a lot of work down in their system. They also took Juan Castaneda with their second pick, a 49 overall, D potential. It's that velocity, man. 42 velocity. I don't know how it ever make an impact with just such a velocity that low. He does have good break, which helps him makes up for it. But Castaneda, not really going to be a factor. Omar Fernandez was who the Royals took, and he's got 55 overall A potential. You can see his hitting stats are already in a good place. His fielding is pretty poor, but he's a first baseman. Doesn't really need that to be overly successful. And the Royals also took in the sixth round a closer, a 60 overall A potential and Frank Cordero from Puerto Rico. So nice value there for the Royals. They might have found their closer of the future after Roberto Osuna. The Twins, they took Eddie Gonzalez in the first round. He has 53 overall C potential. Not a good pick by the Twins, but we're not going to complain when our division rivals make a bad pick. Going to the number one pick in the draft, Johnny Rosenberg, 52 overall A potential. He definitely has it in him, and thankfully he's already 18 years old. But for the second straight year, I think the Pirates... Took a very interesting pick at number one. Last year they took Clayton Keyes. Both of them are going to need a lot of work before they reach the major league level. The Orioles will pick two. Took Marshall Warren, 59 overall, eight potential. Already a very solid defensive man. That's kind of what I assumed out of the gate, like that Roberto Perez type player. Marlins took Ray Carney, 10th overall, and he has the highest potential at 96. Now his bat is going to need a lot, like multiple years of work. But with an eight potential, he's 21. Hopefully one day Ray Carney reaches that. Just It depends on how much time he has. That bat needs a ton of work, but 96 potential. You can't really argue with that. The Angels took Larry Pringle, who's got 91 potential, a 66. I think the Pirates should have taken him number one. I think he's a better pitcher overall. Yes, he's got those injury concerns, but he has great stuff after he develops, and he's only 19. The Blue Jays took his college teammate two picks later, 68 overall, eight potential. I can see Lopez being in the majors within next season if the Blue Jays really need a closer pitcher. Nice pick by Toronto. And then the Braves took Reggie Benson. You remember 26, 61 overall, C potential. Best contact bat in the draft, which is why I think he went number one. So I think he could work out. He's just not going to hit any home runs. He's definitely going to be a single-digit home run hitter. So those are all really the picks that I wanted to highlight. We take a look at our picks, took a look at the picks that we highlighted in our draft preview. So you guys get to know the players. Let me know what you thought of our draft. Do you think we had a good draft? 
Who do you think was our best pick? I like Peter Del Carmen, but you could also argue David France for the value pick in the third round. Let me know what you thought of our division rivals as well as where our top players in the league went. Who do you think will have the biggest impact right out of the gate? You can see some of the other teams made some good picks, but I didn't want to highlight everybody because that would take a lot of time. So I just picked the ones that we honed in on and want we'll to see how their careers develop. But those are all the picks in the 2022 MLB draft. Next episode, we might get back to the Major League level. I know it's been a while since we've been with our Spiders, but I might have one more special episode in store for you guys before we get back to business. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the draft episode. We got one more episode this week in draft week, and then we'll get back to big time stuff. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content. This is Mr. Rob, and I'll see you in the next one.